The boundary tool functions very similarly to the lofted tool, so I won't go into too much detail on using these for a specific part, but I'll go over the general functionality of the boundary feature. And once again, it's fairly interchangeable with the loft. I'm going to go ahead and just point out a few key differences once I have a few sketches out here. So I'm going to go ahead and just create a few planes and a couple sketches to use the boundary feature on. And so just like the loft tool, we'll select out different profiles to create some sort of feature. Now with the boundary tool, we have certain options in here that we don't get with the lofted tool. If you come down, you'll notice this display area. And we can view how our mesh is going to look. And so there's a little bit better of preview options in the boundary tool than you do get in the lofted tool. We can also turn curvature combs on and off. So if you want to see how your curvature is progressing, or how certain sections curvature looks, you can turn this on as well. And we can also look at zebra stripes to see how light is going to reflect off of this surface. You'll notice that instead of a guide curve area, there's a direction to. And unlike the lofted tool, there's no option for center line parameters. We do get this new option of closed surface, though. And this will try to create a closed body. Typically, I won't use this option, though, as it's a little bit more difficult to control. So if, once again, if I look into the lofted tool, I'll select out profiles, and then I'll choose guide curves or a center line. Now, I'll almost exclusively use the boundary tool over the lofted tool because of how the two tools function. For a lofted feature, when I select out a guide curve, SolidWorks is going to do its best to fit that guide curve. So if you have a very simple geometry, it's usually going to be an exact fit to your guide curve. If you have something more complex, then you might run into an issue where it doesn't follow the guide curve exactly. That's because it uses the profile as an exact fit, and it uses the guide curve as an influence. The one instance where you would want to use the loft over the boundary is that if you have to have a specifically defined center line, you have the centerline parameters within the loft. Otherwise, the difference with the boundary tool is that it treats these directions equally. So if you create curves that aren't exactly possible, the loft will work with the guide curve to match it as closely as possible, whereas the boundary feature will simply fail. The advantage of this, though, is that if you have a curve that you want to fit exactly in that direction too, SolidWorks is going to fit it exactly or fail the feature. So in that manner you know you'll get the right dimensions with the boundary tool. So I could quickly create a direction too if I wanted. And for the direction to, similar to the guide curves for the loft, these do need to pierce the profiles that they'll be running through. So with both the lofted and boundary tool, if we wanted to use open curves, we would want to use the boundary surface tool or the lofted surface tool, as opposed to trying to do it in the boundary. 
if I do create two open faces or open curves it'll give me a preview of what it'll create but it won't actually create those features so with this we'll work with closed profiles with the direction too we also get options for the end condition which you don't get with the lofted tool and its guide curves. And with the boundary surface tool you get certain end conditions for tangency to face and curvature to face that you won't get with the lofted tool. So if I have let's say another profile out in space If I don't want to create, worry about creating the direction 2 to get this right, I can always just use those end conditions to make this look good. So with the sketch 8, I have this not connected to any face. So I'm going to get the standard options of normal to profile and direction vector. But with that edge 1, I do have a face that follows that edge. So I can choose tangency to face as well as curvature to face. And these options work in the same manner as normal to profile. You can modify the draft angle as well as the tangent length. One of the advantages of this tool is being able to look at the curvature combs to see how the curvature is going to change and this can give you a good idea if something needs to be modified or if you need to use a direction to to be able to get the right geometry. You can see with the boundary tool you can quickly get one continuous body. So I won't dive into too much detail on the boundary cut as it works the same as the boundary feature but I'll go ahead and just create one quickly so you can see what that looks like. So once again I can just create a few profiles and then just create a boundary cut between these two elements. So just like a lofted cut, I can quickly create a channel or a cutout within my part using that same feature. But that'll function with the exact same options as the boundary feature. So once again, I do think the boundary feature does work a little bit better than the loft tool. And it's a little bit easier to work with because of those curvature combs as well as the preview that you get. The last thing I wanted to point out with the boundary tool just like in a loft you can quickly add connectors. One of the nice things with the boundary tool is you can flip connectors. So you can see I, I can flip that surface inside out which doesn't quite work or flip it back. So if you ever get crossed connectors you can quickly flip that and if I right click into one of my profiles I can add in connectors as I want as well as resetting the connectors and undoing those connector edits so I can get back to the default. But as I had stated at the beginning of the video, if I'm using solid features, I'll typically err towards the boundary over the loft as it's a little bit more accurate and a little bit more robust of a tool.